They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and this is true not just in life but also in video games. So when Capcom created the impressive Street Fighter 2, which upon release in arcades just blew away the competition and proved so popular that players would queue around the block just to play it, you had to know that there would be ports for the home console market. And with this, Capcom would continually make adjustments to the Street Fighter formula, with Street Fighter 2 Turbo and of course Super Street Fighter, which was the version to own in my opinion. Konami of course had the TMNT license and had already made a slew of games on both the 8 and 16 bit consoles and after the first NES game which proved to be somewhat difficult for younger players, the subsequent games would be much better suited to the license, doing away with platforming and opting for a Double Dragon-esque beat em up style which is honestly what the series is best known for on the NES. Then they would follow this up with the port of their arcade smash Turtles in Time for the SNES, which is by far the best Turtles game ever in my opinion. So the question for Konami now was, where do we go from here? The Turtles bandwagon, although diminishing in popularity, was still popular enough to warrant another set of games, but what to do with the formula now? Well, they did what a lot of great companies do and took inspiration from Capcom's Street Fighter 2 series and decided to try and put their own stamp on it by creating a one-on-one -on -one fighting game starring the heroes in a half shell and a cast of others and called this game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Now most of you will probably be aware of the SNES and Mega Drive versions, which you would expect. But in 1993, with the 8-bit NES superseded by the SNES and trying to hang on with developers finding new and innovative ways to push the old hardware, we all got an unexpected gift. Konami had made an 8-bit version of Tournament Fighters as a kind of last hurrah for the NES. Now I remember buying a games magazine when I was little and I saw this article and I was just blown away by this news. However, I didn't get to play it until about two years ago, but they do say that the best things in life are worth waiting for, and so is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES. Now, each version of Tournament Fighters has a different storyline and cast of characters, and despite more powerful systems better able to outperform the NES, this is, in my opinion, one of the best fighting games ever made. The premise is simple. Shredder has gotten tired of the four turtles always scuppering his plans, and writes a letter to them inviting them to take part in a tournament to decide who is the most powerful. Once again, another incentive for entering is to rescue Splinter who has been taken by Shredder to further make the turtles take part. Now this is not just a case of the four turtles versus Shredder, it's every man, or in this case turtle for themselves, as the heroes must put aside brotherhood, family loyalty and teamwork and compete against each other to decide who is the strongest out of them all. Once this is achieved, then the winning turtle will go on to face two more opponents, them being Casey Jones and Hothead, before a final battle with Araku Saki himself, the Shredder, on the streets of Manhattan. Now what a cool concept. Anyone thinking that this is a poor man Street Fighter will be disappointed. This takes all the best elements from Street Fighter 2, with the combat quite fast, intense, adrenaline pumping and addicting. Each of the turtles have many moves in their arsenal and Konami have mapped these moves really well within the limitation of the NES pad, so you can essentially button mash trying different things and even the most inexperienced player will have the opportunity to pull off some impressive moves. I mean again this is running on an 8 bit system and my god there's even a turbo option to speed up the gameplay which is a wink and a nod again to Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Each of the four turtles however cannot use their weapons, which you think would be a disadvantage or due to NES limitations, but it actually works out pretty well. By engaging in a fair fight with no weapons to use, it's almost an even brawl. If the computer is beating you senseless time and time again, which it will do most of the time, Splinter sends a power up into the match and whoever picks it up will be able to unleash a deadly fireball to severely damage the opponent, which has gotten me out of some scrapes time and time again. So you work your way through each opponent, stopping once to take part in a bonus game to smash some wood before time expires, and as you play you can kind of just spam the same attacks on your opponents most of the time. I mean Raphael is just perfect for this, and I was able to beat the game using his bites and strong attacks. The game is free difficulty settings, with easy giving you two continues, normal mode giving you just one, and hard mode you don't get any. I beat this game on hard mode and my god is it totally worth it. It's not an intensely long game, but it's an incredibly satisfying one. 
The graphics are just dark, gritty and the animation on each turtle and character is very well detailed with Shredder looking and being the most impressive in the game. And each of the four areas you battle on in this game are just awe inspiring and I had no idea games could look this good on this system. So is there anything I think the game could do better? Well, I am disappointed with story mode as you can only play it as one of the four turtles and can only play it as Casey, Hothead and Shredder in versus mode or tournament mode where you can create a simple tournament with your friends or against the CPU. Also the game may beat you down more often than not but it's by no means impossible and I was able to beat the whole game on normal and hard in about 2 hours. However there were times before this where the AI would just go turbo on me with spammy attacks so I guess it's kind of like catching the game in the right mood in order to become victorious. Also I do feel the game does need one or two extra fighters just to make things a little more interesting. Although this game is amazing for 1993, it's a nice pick up and play brawler that is well designed, well executed, imaginative and a perfect example of what can be achieved with very little. I mean the SNES version is amazing but if you haven't played this, check it out as it has a completely different feel and style and is just as competitive and a really good version to play, although a little on the short side, it's worth replaying time and time again with friends and again setting up tournaments against the computer it's a hell of a lot of fun thank you so much for watching my review and if you have enjoyed it why not show me some love smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more retro video game reviews take care and i will see you next time